Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Team Perms webinar, Delivering Innovation and Enhancing Efficiency in Healthcare IT with John Coffin and Bob Fierstall. I'm Allison Crawford, and I'll be your host for tonight's webinar. The healthcare IT services or HIP market continues to expand, projected to become a $66 billion opportunity by 2020. Technology vendors serving healthcare organizations are under pressure to provide solutions that enhance operational efficiency, lower costs, and improve interoperability on embracing emerging technologies and delivering innovation in the healthcare IT service market. In the next half an hour, we'll go over what's happening with these trends in this market. Before I pass this over to John Bob, there are a few housekeeping items I'd like to cover. First, we're recording today's session and we'll be posting it on our YouTube site, TBRI channel. We encourage you to visit our channel to watch this presentation or any of the others that we've posted. Second, we'd like to hear your opinions and thoughts on the materials we're presenting. Please send any questions or comments to the Q&A or chat function. We'll address them at the end of the presentation, or you can reach out directly to any one of us on the webinar today to set up a private discussion. Third, we'll send out the slides to everyone registered for today's webcast within 24 hours of the conclusion of the webinar. You can also find these slides as well as other thought leadership pieces, webinar decks, and commentary on SlideShare at www.slideshare.net backslash TBR underscore market underscore insight, and we'll share all these social media links again at the end of our presentation. Now let me introduce John and Bob. As a senior analyst in TBR professional services practice, John Costas provides client-specific research and analysis, including primary and secondary research for specialized programs. John's areas of expertise include IT consulting, management consulting, IT outsourcing, business process outsourcing, application development and maintenance, and systems integration. His company coverage includes Emphasis, Raytheon Intelligence, Information and Services, Northrop Grumman, L3 Communications, Booz Allen Hamilton, and CACI International. Bob Tierstall is an analyst in TBR's professional services practice. He participates in research, provides analysis, and evaluates financial performance and strategic investments of the companies in the professional services market, including Accenture, Deloitte Consulting, Infosys, and CCS. In addition to his contribution to the healthcare IT services benchmark, he also contributes to custom research for clients and financial modeling projects. And with that, let me hand this over to John. Thank you, Allison, and thanks everyone for, for joining us today. Good afternoon, and welcome to Technology Business Research's uh, Healthcare IT Services Benchmark Review for the, the third calendar quarter of, of 2014. Uh, as Allison mentioned, my name is John Costas. I'm a senior analyst and I'm the manager of the public sector and health IT services practice here at TBR, and I'll be one of the, uh, the presenters today uh, for our session. I've been an analyst with TBR since 2001, and I've just directed our uh, research program in the public sector and health IT services areas since 2008. Just a couple of comments about our, our research program in health IT services. Our focus within the healthcare IT services market is to provide company-centric research intended to accelerate our customer success. The information that we'll be reviewing today comes primarily from our health IT services vendor benchmark report for, as I mentioned a moment ago, for the third calendar quarter of, of 2014. This report just published back in January. We're going to be walking through some of the key highlights from that report today. Within the report, and within this detailed report, it's information on vendor strategies, strategic actions, key developments during the quarter, alliance and acquisition activity, and the overall fiscal and business line performance of the companies that we follow in the healthcare IT services market. The, the information that myself and Boz and the, the rest of the healthcare IT services research team at TBR delivers uh, is really invaluable to any vendor that is uh, looking to expand their footprint in the healthcare IT services market or compete more effectively uh, in this global market against, uh, against their peers. So we're excited to present the, uh, the findings uh, from our most re recent benchmark uh, report for you, and we look forward to receiving your feedback and responding to your questions about the information that we will present today. So today I'm going to talk, uh, Boz and I will talk about uh, three primary topic areas from the most recent healthcare IT services benchmark study. First, we'll cover some of the key financial highlights from the third quarter uh, benchmark report, which, as I mentioned, published uh, last month. 
Then we'll spend a few minutes talking about how the companies in our benchmark study have responded to the market environment uh, with uh, changes to their operations, uh, changes to their portfolios, to their offerings, uh, and how they've leveraged partnerships and, and acquisitions to enhance their competitive standing in the healthcare IT services market. And then finally, We'll close with a few comments about the outlook for the uh, for, for the 2015, and we'll take your questions at the end. So I'd like to begin with a, a quick review of some of the key financial metrics from the most recent benchmark study and how the conditions in the current healthcare IT services environment um, impacted vendor fiscal performance. And in particular, I'm going to focus on trends in revenue growth and profitability and discuss the drivers behind the, uh, the fiscal performance of some of the, the leading vendors in, in our analysis. In short, what we observed in the third calendar quarter of 2014, and in fact throughout most of the year, uh, was that the pace of ER implementations had slowed somewhat, though demand remained solid for secure cloud run and in, in, in compliant uh, regulatory um, compliant ready solutions across all of the healthcare segments while emerging opportunities, and this was especially the case in the third calendar quarter, uh, opportunities emerging outside the U.S. Um, buoyed the performance for several vendors um, in, in a market that was otherwise not contracting but the, the, the pace of growth that we had observed over the last several quarters uh, had slowed somewhat. So we'll talk in, in a moment uh, about some of the drivers for that. So I'll take a moment right now to orient to the audience to the graphic on, on this page. And here, the blue line on the graphic represents the, the average total year-to-year -year growth for all of the, the 20 companies uh, included in our healthcare IT services benchmark study. The red line is also a representation of growth, but in this, but in, for the purposes of this graph, it represents average year-to-year -year revenue growth on a trailing 12-month basis. And the reason why we do that is primarily to, to smooth out the impact of uh, seasonality and seasonal events, um, most notably acquisitions. Both of these averages are, in fact, weighted to account for the size of each benchmark company's respective revenue base uh, in the healthcare IT services market. What we observed in the third calendar quarter of 2014 was that the average uh, aggregate quarterly year-to-year -year growth continued the, the generally decelerating trend that we had observed earlier in the year um, after rebounding slightly in, in the previous quarter, in the second calendar quarter of 2014. Um, using a trailing 12-month approach, um, you know, we, we, we saw a, you know, this, this further illustrates the, uh, uh, the, the, the continued uh, deceleration in growth uh, that, that we observed um, the most certainly impacted, the trailing 12-month average was most certainly impacted by the, the recent drop that we, we witnessed in the first calendar quarter of the year. So although the average growth rates that, that we're portraying here for the healthcare IT services companies you know, have tended to decelerate since the, uh, the end of 2013, our research does indicate that this, this growth rate continues to exceed that of the global IT services market, and we believe this is a key reason certainly why, you know, many of the companies uh, both within our healthcare IT services research program and in our, our global IT services research program um, are interested in moving into this market or expanding their offerings into this market, you know, looking for new ways to, to make inroads into healthcare IT services. In fact, I'll cite a couple of uh, figures from our global IT services uh, benchmark uh, study, which recently published as well, we had pegged the, uh, the average growth rate uh, for the global IT services market at, at between 1% and 2%. It was around 1.5%, I believe, uh, on a trailing 12-month basis. Uh, whereas, as uh, we illustrated on the graphic here, the growth rate is, is, is several times that in, in, uh, for at least our slice of the healthcare IT services uh, market. The drivers behind the growth continue to be the, um, the implementation of uh, EHR, electronic healthcare record systems, although as I mentioned earlier, the volume of the implementation, the pace of implementations has diminished. And we attribute the, uh, the deceleration to many large, large scale healthcare provider organizations have completed or, or they're, they're ramping down the, ins the in installation of new HR, uh, EHR systems 
uh, that they, they had projects that have been ongoing over the last couple of years, certainly projects that uh, have been driven by the incentive programs in 2011 um, for, for the Centers for Medicaid and Medicare Services, CMS. Um, but despite this deceleration in growth that we've observed throughout 2014, we believe that the market you know, continues to be buoyed by demand for health information exchange solutions, solutions uh, that, that, um, that enhance interoperability, uh, as well as, and we, we noted an increase in demand for outsourced uh, solutions of all types of so business process as well as, as IT services. So with that, I'd, I'd like to kind of shift gears a bit and review you know, how the contractors in the benchmark study are performing relative to one another in terms of the, the size of their revenue base, revenue growth, and profitability. So I'll take a moment to briefly orient everyone to the, to the graphic on this page. And once again, this is an illustration of the 20 companies within our healthcare IT services benchmark study and how they position against one another in terms of top line growth margin performance and the respective size of their revenue base. Um, the key takeaway from this graphic is essentially who's growing the fastest and who's doing it most profitably. A couple of details about the graph and, and, and what the, the, you know, how we've represented the data here. The x-axis represents the absolute dollar growth for a year-to-year -year dollar growth for each vendor's healthcare IT services business. The y-axis represents the reported or estimated operating margin for each uh, vendor's healthcare IT services business. And then finally, the size of the bubble for each company represents the volume of re revenue generated uh, in the quarter throughout healthcare IT services sales. Uh, as we saw earlier, the, the average year-to-year -year growth rate for the 20 uh, firms on a trailing 12-month basis, uh, we calculated this uh, quarter or for the, for, uh, the third calendar quarter of 2014 about 6.5%. We plotted this with the vertical dashed red line while the, uh, the average trailing 12-month operating margin of 12.9%, uh, we plotted with a horizontal dashed red line. Uh, let me take a few moments to talk about some of the, the, uh, the outperforming vendors um, that we identified uh, in, in the graphic here. In terms of growth, we saw Deloitte and Accenture driven um, primarily by their continued success leveraging a, a vertically focused and vertically oriented uh, consulting-led approach to drive more higher value type of engagements that, that blend in elements of analytics, um, electronic health record solutions, population health management solutions um, into a, a more holistic um, uh, solution for, for their healthcare IT services customers. Cognizant also emerged uh, during the quarter as one of the, uh, the, the growth leaders. Uh, they continue to leverage low-cost delivery as well as the, the continued growth in their cloud portfolio, uh, so, uh, solutions such as their CareServe uh, package to drive solid revenue growth. Uh, Cerner continues to be a, uh, a growth leader in, in our benchmark study as well, um, very EHR-centric business. Um, and the, their growth driven by the continued traction that they are seeing in expanding their portfolio of analytics, uh, expanded hosting, consulting, and managed services offerings. CGI is um, another vendor that uh, emerged as a growth leader during the quarter. And their growth was better than the, the peer average in, in the third calendar quarter of 2014. And this is uh, surprisingly despite the, uh, the recent difficulties that CGI has experienced in the, the U.S. federal market in particular. Um, but outside of the, uh, the U.S. federal market, CGI has been successful winning uh, awards, uh, healthcare IT related awards with select state governments in the U.S. And they did note a, a key contract win with the National Health Service in the United Kingdom. I'll make a couple of comments about the operating margin leaders in, in the third calendar quarter of 2014, uh, those vendors being CPSI, uh, HCL Technologies, and Infosys. Uh, CPSI, the leader, their, their margin performance led, led um, all of their peers, and in fact, the company has continued to improve its operating margin performance for a second consecutive quarter, primarily by increasing the sales of higher margin EHR and physicians application solutions. And, you know, we see that their focus on, on bundling revenue connection manage, collection management offerings from their TrueBridge uh, subsidiary 
uh, with their software offerings as another enabler uh, for C CPSI to, to drive, in the, uh, drive up their margin performance. HCL Technologies uh, continues to lean on its low-cost workforce and, and its uh, just-in-time hiring approach to cap service delivery costs. Uh, HCLT it continues also to invest more in custom IP development to, to drive its solutions up the value chain and, and enhance the value of its solutions. We see an example of this as being the, uh, the recent release of its population health management uh, services offering. Um, this and many other uh, things that, that HCL has done have helped increase the sales of higher margin proprietary uh, custom developed solutions with, within their portfolio. With respect to Infosys, who was the, the third ranked operating margin leader in third calendar quarter of 2014, similar to, to HCL Technologies, uh, Infosys has also continued to be successful in reducing costs vis-a-vis offshore and nearshore service delivery uh, in the expansion of offshore and, and nearshore service delivery, uh, as well as uh, Infosys has worked a, a very, uh, very aggressively over the last year to, to elevate the utilization rates of, of its staff as, as another lever to drive its margin performance. With respect to Infosys portfolio, we see Infosys continuing to roll out new uh, proprietary healthcare IT services solutions in 2015. You'll certainly, this is an element of their, um, their new CEO's drive to invest in, in higher margin uh, IP such as automation, uh, analytics, vertical specific solutions. And in turn, we see this uh, continuing to buoy their margin performance going forward. And I'll, I'll take a moment now to, to comment on the, some of the laggards in, in, in our, um, our benchmark study. Um, and we see one of the common threads, you know, certainly with, uh, with Lidos and with Harris, as being the, the very high level of exposure that both companies have to, to public sector markets, in particular to the, to the U.S. federal space. Um, you know, where, although there is, there is continued growth in, in healthcare IT services investments, the, uh, the, the, the market, especially in the, in the federal space, is, is growing much slower than, than the overall uh, healthcare IT services market. Although a, a laggard in our benchmark study, we have observed Lidos' revenue growth improving, though their, uh, their revenue base continues to contract, and it was, in fact, the, uh, the sharpest decline that we observed amongst the companies in our benchmark study. With respect to Harris, their sales fell primarily due to the completion of a handful of uh, large uh, government contracts, but we, we don't see Harris as remaining in the laggard uh, quadrant um, for an extended period of time because we, we see uh, their Fusion FX solution as well as uh, efforts to drive uh, sales internationally gaining traction throughout 2015. So we fully expect that Harris is going to, to, uh, to move to the right in, in terms of uh, growth and perhaps uh, move uh, up and to the right as, as their margins improve with the, uh, with, with, as these efforts gain traction. And then finally, all scripts, uh, they lag their peers in terms of operating margin and we attribute this primarily to their commitment to to research and development, they've earmarked a lot of uh, a lot of internal dollars for uh, research and development to drive new solutions. Um, according to one of our analysts, the uh, the proportion of their their TTM revenue that they they devote to to R and D is between 10 and 20 percent. So it's 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 a significant uh, outlay. So you know this has had its impact on on their um, their margin performance. Uh, though we Similar with Harris, we believe that uh, all scripts uh, with respect to margins uh, will see an improvement in their margin performance throughout 2015 as its investments begin to bear fruit, investments in particular in next generation EHR solutions, population health management solutions, and other analytics platforms. So I'll take a few minutes now to talk about some of the other trends uh, geographically in particular that we observed in the, uh, the third calendar quarter of 2014 benchmark. And while the United States does remain the, the core geographic market for the majority of the companies in our benchmark study, 
Um, we, we have observed throughout the course of 2014, and we expect that this is going to continue into 2015, that many of the companies that we follow are increasingly targeting markets outside of the U.S. In the, U, in the U.S., the, uh, the, the focus, you know, continues uh, to be on solutions related to IT modernization, you know, certainly the uh, um, you know, the ACA uh, bill was, was uh, you know, has been and continues to be a driver uh, of, of spend. But now, outside of the U.S., in Canada, in Latin America in particular, this is uh, one particular trend that we, we observed in the third calendar quarter of 14. Um, these markets where we're seeing more public and private health organizations, you're looking to telemedicine solutions, for example, and looking to mobile solutions. To, uh, to modernize and to streamline care in, in, in those areas, in those countries. Uh, Canadian healthcare providers um, are focusing increasingly on, on using IT to reduce healthcare costs. It's certainly not something that is unique to Canada, but uh, so we, we have noticed an increase in focus within the, the, the core group of companies that we follow in the Canadian market as a result of this. You know, they're spending, healthcare organizations in, in Canada are spending more on population health and analytic solutions, and this is attracting many of the companies in our benchmark study to that market. In Latin America, we see uh, an emergence of Latin America as, a, as another fast-growing uh, healthcare IT services market as providers uh, in the, the Latin American market modernize their own IT systems and are you know, looking for new EHR and, and telemedicine solutions uh, to implement as well. Growth in the, the European market in EMEA has slowed due to weakening regional economies and, and uh, a, a, a slowdown in public sector healthcare outlays, but we've still observed um, some pockets of growth, for example, in the United Kingdom where we see the NHS boosting digital healthcare spending with, uh, with an increased focus on EHR analytics and population health management. Uh, the Middle East in particular has been a market that has, um, we've gotten a lot of questions about from the companies that we follow, and we've seen an increase in activity there. Um, and in particular, we see you know, public and private sector healthcare organizations in Qatar, in Saudi Arabia, uh, in the UAE, also ramping up their investment in, in uh, modernization solutions and, and, and other solutions to, to bring their healthcare IT um, platforms and, and infrastructure current. And then finally, in the Asia-Pacific region, the growth in APAC does continue to trail the, uh, the other regions in our benchmark study as, uh, and, and we attribute this you know, primarily to the APAC market being somewhat less mature than its counterpart markets in the Americas and EMEA. Um, we, we see a continued heavy reliance on, on paper-based administrative systems um, which you know, makes, a pri makes prioritizing IT systems less vital for provider organizations in some less developed nations. Um, the spend in more mature countries you know, has, uh, has been increasing, such as in Australia, where the, uh, the Australian government, uh, with, with its national e-health strategy, um, is in turn generating new demand and increased demand for new EHR systems and new patient engagement solutions. Um, and then finally, one of the other factors that we see driving, um, albeit modest growth in the APAC region, uh, continues to be the, uh, the kind of the proliferation of medical tourism in the region. So with that, I'm going to hand the presentation over to Boz, and he's going to spend a few minutes talking uh, about uh, vendor activity to align with the, uh, the current conditions and demand trends that we've observed in the healthcare IT services market environment. Thank you, John, and um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as John mentioned, I want to um, focus on the next couple of slides, uh, particularly to summarize the key developments regarding uh, new solutions, uh, introductions, new alliance formation, and acquisition activity that uh, supported uh, overall vendors' activity and investments and their go-to-market approach. Uh, so let's begin discussing the new service uh, introduction during the quarter, uh, much of it being driven by the ongoing and increasing uh, R&D com uh, the compares across the board in our health IT services benchmark study are conducting. To drive new solution introdu introduction in analytics, um, cloud, mobility, and uh, interoperability. During the quarter, we know that a number of competitors uh, releasing a variety of new offerings, and we do have uh, several examples uh, on the slide here. 
for example, uh, Accenture launched a suite of predictive uh, health intelligence solutions uh, created to, to uh, help life science and big pharmaceutical um, companies really gain insight on accuracy and efficiency of uh, treatment plans and services through analytics. Uh, to develop that solution, uh, Accenture collaborated as well with uh, Explorers uh, Liaison Technologies and Prediction Software to, uh, to run the software. Um, further down, uh, IBM launched, uh, the, uh, Watson continued to be a, a key driver for uh, healthcare analytics, but the company launched a Watson Discovery Advisor on cloud, which is uh, essentially a scalable analytics services designed to help users uh, more efficiently um, undertake research projects. Um, IBM has uh, loaded Watson essentially on database with more than 600,000 items for that particular solution, uh, medical evidence, and over 2 million pages of medical journal and clinical trial text. Um, the solution uses cognitive analytics capabilities to assess and evaluate scientific research processes and applications by interpreting text uh, from preloaded uh, medical papers. Certainly a trend that uh, we expect uh, and Watson being a, to, to remain a, a core driver for IBM's uh, healthcare IT uh, services revenues. Um, McKesson, uh, McKesson's care manager, the solution was launched in the, in the company new care management workflow um, and documentation solution for provider organizations. Uh, McKesson continues to push in the provider segment. The solution uses, uses uh, evidence-based clinical assessment tools uh, to analyze gaps in patient care and identity patients. Uh, for whom targeted programs should be most valuable uh, and effective in enhancing quality and availability of care. Uh, the, the solution was originally beta tested um, at St. Vincent's Health Partners uh, in uh, Bridgeport, Connecticut, um, where it, uh, clinicians reported being better to able to remain connected to patients and improve clinical outcomes. And that's certainly a trend that we're going to keep on eye because with the uh, uh, consumerization in patient care and outcome based. Uh, pay, uh, pay for services, it's really important for that connection between the payer providers and the patient how to create a more of a cohesive ecosystem. Uh, lastly, uh, Xerox Midas Group launched uh, its Juvel Care performance platform during the quarter. Uh, it's the, the, the most recent, the, the, the newest um, uh, platform of, of Xerox uh, portfolio, which essentially uh, uh, covers advanced analytics and workflow uh, software package. Uh, which further expands the company's DPO offerings, uh, especially in the healthcare analytics space. Uh, Juvel, uh, we expect Juvel to enable healthcare, uh, Xerox healthcare provider clients to provide a better and more cost-conscious care to patients. Uh, essentially, uh, the, the end consumers uh, and provider clients uh, will uh, also have access to real-time performance data for their own organizations, which will enable them to maximize workflow efficiencies uh, it's really an overarching theme is, again, going towards the consumerization in healthcare and able to make more of a seamless interaction between uh, providers and patients. Moving on to the next slide, please. <clears throat> on the next slide is that uh, uh, ally approach that we, uh, we, we brought up in the beginning of the presentation. And uh, again, several examples of uh, vendors' uh, relationship, uh, deepening relationship or establishing new uh, alliance partnership that helped them to develop a, a scalable uh, healthcare IT portfolio that can help them to better position and better compete in the over-competitive market. A uh, few of the examples we have, essentially, uh, essentially deepen its relationship with Salesforce.com to develop the connected physician, physician solution that, again, will allow the company to uh, provide, uh, will enable providers to seamlessly communicate with their patients while also addressing uh, uh, meaningful use two and three uh, stage requirements. Uh, we believe such solutions will align uh, with the center's broader push into digital services. Uh, that's a kind of overarching theme on the corporate level that kind of trickles down on the vertical specific level as well. Uh, and it will help the company capture some more of a consulting, high value consulting system integration engagement and also it enhances um, the already vertical, deep vertical expertise. Um, CPSI, uh, a former alliance with IBM, which uh, uh, it's really around predictive analytics that will help the company position its offerings as premium solutions as the company tries to capture the uh, share in that market. Uh, the, so the solution fits in overarching uh, go-to-market to bundle revenue cycle management uh, offerings from its through bridge uh, subsidiary uh, with a software to bolster its profitability of its deals. Uh, we expect the upcoming ICD-10 deadline and more complex medical calling requirements 
and to lead to more significant growth for CPSI medical coding uh, BPO services. Cerner uh, certainly pursue, uh, move, uh, also pursue an uh, alliance with Intermountain. Intermountain has been becoming an a, a alliance of, of choice, so to speak. You know, Deloitte did an alliance not too long ago and formed the uh, Converge Health uh, uh, unit uh, not shortly after. And then see it's now Cerner we see with Intermountain. We, we see, we, we, what we see is that we believe that Intermountain's clinical ex uh, expertise and experience delivering healthcare for the military will provide uh, more valuable perspective to help Cerner, in a, a, along with its partners, Lidos and Accenture, design an EHR system uh, that will better provide the most value for the, um, the competition for the uh, dim sum contract with, uh, for the Department of Defense. Lastly, Deloitte, uh, uh, Deloitte pursue, uh, it's essentially it's really uh, applying its uh, it's going after technology partners. That's kind of like they are enhancing its, their consulting capabilities. They still lead, they're still consulting led vendor, but they also position themselves as an end to end vendor with the broad uh, network of alliance partners. Um, the, the, the firm uh, partnership with uh, the Dell, essentially adding the Dell Boomi to its cloud mix integration uh, application platform along with the horizontal layer connectors at Salesforce.com. Uh, Salesforce, uh, Salesforce uh, platform offers it will help create uh, managed service opportunities for Deloitte, uh, particularly in the emerging uh, private uh, healthcare exchange space. And we also see other players such as Dell to benefit uh, as part of that partnership that will, uh, will certainly pursue opportunities in the private healthcare exchange um, after that alliance. Moving on to the next slide, please. <clears throat> So lastly, the, the, the last approach is that the buy approach, and we have seen some uh, large-scale acquisition in the previous uh, quarter. We noted the two large acquisitions of uh, uh, um, Cognizant uh, with uh, Trizetto and Cerner with, uh, with uh, it's, 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 it's Siemens Healthcare IT Solutions. Uh, this quarter, uh, Old Script pursued acquisition, interna essentially international expansion to uh, purchase uh, Waze's uh, medical solutions. Um, really what we see is the trend that uh, healthcare IT services vendors buying uh, with workflow and analytic solutions that enhance the functionality of their EHR solutions. Uh, we expect Old Scripts to leverage uh, Waze's ties to several of the NHS, NHS trusts to cross-sell uh, its EHR analytics and patient engagement solutions. What we see is, again, kind of tied up to what uh, John was mentioning earlier, is opportunities outside the U.S. The U.S. market is certainly a core, remains a core market, but vendors are diversifying their portfolio, their footprint, and looking outside uh, the U.S. Um, Cognizant uh, went after, uh, after one more acquisition this quarter that kind of following the earlier purchase of Trizetto, it rounds up the Cognizant Cloud delivered and digital centric uh, healthcare portfolio. Uh, which positions really the company for growth. Uh, and it's, we see the company really making a push uh, onshore, uh, the expanding their cloud, BPAS uh, portfolio for life science and healthcare and onshore footprint and that we really trying to pursue more of a high value uh, 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 engagement. Uh, that certainly uh, is it's a concentrated effort from the company to kind of depart from its uh, low cost outsourcing uh, status. What we see over the overarching team and kind of to round up those, uh, this section is that the developing through R&D, ally or by approach and developing platforms that enhance, enhance uh, patient provider collaboration uh, will expand vendors addressable market of providers, will help them to uh, uh, expand the client base. Uh, essentially what we see is that uh, enabling clients to self-manage their care, such as having online access similar to online banking and kind of correlating that to the financial service industry will be a critical uh, uh, piece of uh, the puzzle of moving forward for that ecosystem of providers, payers, and patients. Moving down to the next slide, please. So <clears throat> on the next slide, uh, what we want to really highlight is, uh, is um, one final topic today will be the growth outlook for the remainder of 2014 and for 2015 for the first in our healthcare IT services benchmark. In short, we expect healthcare exchange work EHR replacement projects and the continued proliferation of cloud and mobility to be the key drivers of growth for vendors in the upcoming year. And we're going to go into details in the next couple of slides and some of the highlights we expect to see. 
so let's take a moment just to kind of uh, point out what the, the chart represents here. Uh, the blue line represents an average total year-to-year -year growth uh, for all 20 firms in the healthcare IT services benchmark study, and the average is weighted to account for the size for uh, each benchmark firm's respective revenue base in the healthcare and the health IT services, similar to what how John uh, pointed out earlier in the presentation. We have captured the data uh, from the first three quarters of 2014, as well as projections for the next five quarters, taking us through 2015. Following the deceleration in average growth rates that began early in 2014, we expect market growth to bottom out over the next two quarters, and they resume an accelerating trajectory throughout 2015. On the next page, we'll uh, detail the key factors behind the modest rebound in growth we expect during the upcoming year. So here are the three trends we see that's going to be driving uh, the opportunities for healthcare IT services vendors over the, through the rest of 2014 in terms of like uh, calendar performance and throughout uh, 2015 since we are into the calendar year. Many of the vendors in our uh, health IT services research program are reporting that a growing number of provider organizations are looking to replace legacy EHR systems with newer EHRs they are better able to support interoperability and the growing sophistication of uh, health data. In addition, newer EHRs are better able to achieve compliance uh, with uh, meaningful use stage two and three are increasingly becoming soft. It's basically the, the deadlines are coming sooner than a lot of providers are expecting. So we see the leading EHR companies such as Cerner, NextGen, and Allscript uh, really poised to um, uh, provide clients migrating to new vendors. Migration will likely accelerate, as uh, the meaningful use stage three rules are set, uh, favoring vendors with most interoperable EHR solutions and those offering population management analytics. Uh, other vendors, uh, like long-term and host accurate providers, such as home uh, care, hospice, elderly, and uh, uh, psychiatric providers that were ineligible for EHR incentives, will also look to upgrade IT systems to accommodate um, health information exchanges, regulatory compliance, and enhance interoperability. And kind of a side note here, just kind of something very recent announcement uh, with SAP, uh, it's a new uh, uh, platform code that was just announced on Tuesday. We expect that a lot of those uh, vendors and providers that are looking to upgrade, they may just wait to see how that uh, trend will continue and kind of maybe all go on the SAP bandwagon, so to speak, and kind of uh, launch the in-memory HANA and instead of going from or the one that are changing from the old EHR to new HR, uh, choosing SAP HANA as, as, a, as a core uh, platform, uh, and the S4 for, uh, with HANA that uh, SAP just launched a couple of days ago. The second trend, uh, we expect the health information uh, exchange market will remain another key factor, uh, booing for the growth of most health IT services vendors in 2015. We expect the global HIE market um, will sustain near double-digit expansion, uh, again, driven by the meaningful use in the U.S. and global demand for IT solutions that reduce operating costs for health or healthcare organizations. We anticipate even more aggressive HAE growth in Asia. I know it's been a laggard uh, over the last year, but we certainly see a rebound there due to the fast-growing middle classes and corresponding demand for improved uh, patient care. Uh, we expect analytics to, to increasingly drive HAE growth, um, where data tools will be needed to collect uh, patient information. Uh, vendors will also increasingly leverage uh, healthcare information exchanges to cross-sell population health. Uh, management solutions using HIE data and to generate more business insights. It's really bringing that overarching IT services uh, uh, team that uh, uh, clients are seeking for business outcomes and developing uh, customized healthcare IT solutions and uh, while addressing regulatory compliance will be a, a core driver across uh, uh, markets uh, in 2015. And finally, we believe uh, healthcare organizations growing embrace of digital healthcare technologies such as uh, analytics cloud and mobility solutions will be another growth driver for uh, hit companies throughout 2015. Um, evidence continues to mount that uh, these, uh, some of them are emerging, some of them are already in place technology, reduce costs and uh, improve outcomes. Uh, we believe that uh, the continued and, in fact, accelerating efforts to expand and enhance digital health uh, IT portfolios on behalf of many companies in our healthcare IT uh, services research program organically through acquisitions and by forging new strategic alliances will increasingly bear fruit during 2015. It's really 
the trends that are in place uh, uh, will continue to uh, accelerate. Uh, and we saw that acceleration from 2015, but certainly more opportunities to come into, uh, in, uh, we saw the acceleration in 2014, but certainly more opportunities to come in uh, 2015. And that, uh, we'll be happy to take some questions. Thanks, Bob. Uh, thanks, both of you who have sent questions through now. Um, we had a couple of questions uh, early on about one of the earlier slides and asking for some comments around Epic and HP. Uh, was, uh, uh, hold on a second. Uh, the question, HP is sitting in the middle of the four quadrants. You can address this. That would be great. Yes. Yeah, uh, thanks, Allison. Uh, this is uh, John Costas. Um, we've asked uh, a few of our analysts to, uh, to join us on the call today to field questions about their specific companies. Uh, we do have our, our HP analysts here as well as our analysts for IBM and CSC. So I'm going to turn the, uh, the floor over to uh, Cassandra, uh, who is our, our HP analyst, and uh, she should be able to, uh, to take care of this question for you. And if not, we, we're certainly uh, uh, happy to take this as a follow-up. Sure. Thanks, John. Um, so my name is Cassandra Mushin. Um, I'm lead analyst on HP and HP Healthcare IT Services. Um, the question regarding HP was um, essentially asking, you know, why is HP in the middle of the four quadrants, so to speak? Um, and then, you know, what are HP's competitive advantages and where do they seem to um, not necessarily lag but need to catch up in, in healthcare IT? So, um, the answer is kind of a few pronged one. Um, so HP has the technology um, and, and services capabilities that it needs to succeed in healthcare IT services. Um, it's, it's definitely one of the larger vendors in the space in terms of share revenue size. Um, it has pretty average growth, which is actually really good for a larger business. Um, and the operating margin is, is right about average as well. And so I think that HP is actually doing pretty well in this space considering all of kind of the strengths against it, so to speak. So there's been a lot of changes at HP recently. Um, one of the, the positive changes that I've seen is, you know, realigning the services business to, to have an industry-focused practice within um, that's really helped the healthcare, the healthcare um, IT services go-to-market approach um, on, a, on a global basis. Um, also, cloud is, is a big, big factor in this. So HP has transitioned many of its existing customers from services, or especially um, the ITO services, over to cloud. Um, so that, that affects revenue, it affects margin um, for its HIS business specifically. And I think the biggest the biggest struggle for HP is, is um, you know, playing both sides. So staying true to its, you know, its traditional IT customers and its portfolio, while also, you know, being committed to the cloud and offering, you know, health IT specific um, cloud solutions. Um, and I think that one of the biggest areas where HP may lag, so in the question it was brought up, you know, where does HP lag against Cerner and Deloitte, and I think one of the biggest areas there is that, you know, Cerner is a, a very well-known health IT player, um, Deloitte is very, very well-known for its strategic consulting, um, HP has the technology and, and portfolio to really succeed in health IT, however, it acts as more of an IT advisor, so how to use the IT to um, affect business results, whereas I feel Deloitte will go into an engagement, you know, really focusing on the strategy and the, and the future roadmap for the business. Thanks, Cassandra. Great. Um, we have another question that came through. Is it the area of integrated care that you see as the biggest area of growth moving forward?
Why don't we take that question as a follow-up? What I'd like to do is I'd like to sit with our analyst team and discuss this in more detail. I'd like to, to dive into each of the individual companies and see what they're doing and what they, they said about this particular market area. So we're happy to take this question uh, and, and follow up with you uh, after the, uh, the presentation today. Okay. Another question we had is what do you see or what do you foresee in 2015 regarding trends in mergers, mergers and acquisitions? I'm sorry, trends in mergers and acquisitions, is that the question? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, we, we do appreciate the question. And we, in a nutshell, we, we certainly see a continuation of the, um, the trend that we observed in 2014 where the vendors, the healthcare IT services vendors in, in our, our benchmark are leveraging mergers and acquisitions to enhance, uh, primarily for, for the purposes of enhancing the existing portfolios and then rapidly scaling their capabilities uh, you know, not so much purchasing revenues, but you know, looking looking at M and A as a way to enhance the uh, the, the offering set that uh, that they have. Uh, in in terms of specific areas, one area where we've observed and we believe there's going to be a continuation uh, of investment, uh, both um, internally, organically, as well as inorganically by uh, acquisitions, uh, is in the analytics. So we anticipate that uh, vendors. Um, are and will remain busy scouting for potential small to perhaps even mid-market size acquisitions uh, in the healthcare analytics area. Uh, we expect that um, the quality of care and, and driving healthcare outcomes for clients, patient engagements, uh, patient, uh, patient engagement, excuse me, uh, and, and controlling fraud, waste, and abuse will be top of mind uh, for vendors that are, are looking to make acquisitions in this particular area in, in analytics. Um, and this certainly follows the, uh, the, the the recent reports of security breaches across many industries, including healthcare. Um, and we expect vendors to look uh, to, to acquire companies that also enhance their, their cybersecurity capabilities. We've seen this uh, both in the public sector side as well as the commercial side, uh, security capabilities, in particular around the development uh, and deployment at endpoint, uh, at the endpoint, as, as well as uh, solutions that uh, that enhance uh, capabilities in, in data loss uh, prevention. Um, at a bit of a higher level, we we think the overall pace of M&A activity that we observed in 2014 could, in fact, accelerate in 2015. Certainly driven in part by the uh, the ACA, which is rewarding value and coordination across healthcare organizations, which in turn is driving uh, healthcare companies to adjust their portfolios and offerings. Look for ways to do that, and we see M&A as being one of the uh, the, the methods that uh, companies will continue to employ uh, to to achieve that. We also see a, a driver being the the continued consolidation uh, amongst EHR companies specifically, and we, regarding this, we wouldn't be surprised to see the uh, many of the vendors, the, the, the leading, the larger scale healthcare IT services vendors in our benchmark study uh, looking to scoop up some of these smaller EHR competitors to obtain greater access to patient data. Um, and one final comment about M&A, uh, I believe that the scarcity of, of uh, healthcare analytics capabilities and, and the increased demand uh, that, that there will be is uh, it's going to elevate the price of, act, uh, of the acquisition. So we, we, we see some vendors may be forced to pay more of a premium than they, than they had expected for these acquired companies, um, which could in turn have an impact on uh, their, their, their profitability and their internal cash flows. Okay, uh, we have another question. You discussed the difficulties in the U.S. federal healthcare IT space that have impacted the performance of a handful of vendors in your benchmark. What do you see for the U.S. federal healthcare IT market for 2015? Okay, thanks, thanks for that question. You know, certainly the, the dim sum, which uh, we, we referenced earlier, is, is going to be one of, if not the biggest story in, in federal health IT in 2015, and, and the, uh, uh, the battle for the contract, which I believe is going to be awarded in July, continues to heat up. Um, one of the things that I've observed that I, I think is particularly interesting, one of the most recent developments that, that I find kind of compelling is the addition of Google to the PwC and General Dynamics-led team, especially as this 
comes on the heels of, of PwC and Google uh, announcing their collaboration to drive uh, greater overall cloud adoption across multiple industry sectors, in, including healthcare. I see Google's addition to PwC's team perhaps as a signal that the ultimate solution, the ultimate dim sum solution, uh, will in fact need to include a, a very significant cloud component. And with respect to Google in particular, you know, we, we at TBR look at Google as a very uh, established player. They have a strong reputation for innovation. We see that as being key to the ultimate dim sum, um, the, the winning team for the dim sum award. Uh, Google also has a, a strong reputation for secure and open, orchestra, uh, open architecture. And we believe that Google really understands how to achieve Internet scale. All of these, these factors that I've just mentioned uh, align, in, in our view, align well with what the federal government's key expectations are or will be from the, uh, the winning uh, dim sum team. At, at kind of a higher level, the, <clears throat> we see the, the U.S. federal government kind of having reached the point where you know, it's accumulated a, a massive amount of, of data, largely unstructured data, and is wondering, well, what do we do with it all now? And, and you know, we see this as being a continuing driver of uh, healthcare IT spend in the federal space for the next several years. In fact, while the, the, um, the pace of overall federal IT spending is expected to, certainly on the DOD and Intel side, decline over the next couple of years, uh, and remain flat or in, in some, some cases marginally up on the civilian side, we see spending on, the, uh, on healthcare IT initiatives as being one of the key things that buoys overall federal IT spending on both the, the, uh, the DOD side as well as the, uh, the civilian side. I, I believe if you take a, a closer look at the, the proposed budget, the, the proposed uh, federal budget for, for 2015, the uh, many of the, there's only a handful of areas where a handful of agencies where spending is expected to increase, and many of those are in healthcare related uh, areas. And then a, a final comment I'd like to make with respect to the, uh, to the federal government, the U.S. federal space and healthcare IT, is around the, uh, the recent plan that was issued by the Office of uh, National uh, Coordinator for Health IT, the ONC, in which it outlined its, its strategic objectives for health IT through uh, 2020. We, we see this as being a good step in the right direction. Uh, we see this as, you know, certainly helping to more clearly define the, uh, the interoperability roadmap. However, overriding all of this, the, the ONC's plan, dim sum, expectations for steady healthcare IT investment over the next few years, um, really none of this in, in any way, shape, or form diminishes the fact that the federal government really has to ensure uh, and enhance the, uh, the, in our view, the fragile level of stability in the appropriations process that, that has taken hold over the last uh, couple of quarters. If we were to see another round of sequestration or another budget impasse, frankly, all bets are off. So um, everything is really going to hinge around the stability of, of the, uh, the appropriations pro process and, and streamlining uh, federal uh, purchasing. And there are some early indications now that the uh, 114th uh, Congress is underway and uh, some major policy items uh, appear to be on, on the block for, for change, uh, that there are some indications that uh, the, the IT contracting community has some things to, to, to look forward to in, to in terms of an improving um, procurement environment. Um, for example, and, and I'll leave it at this, uh, for example, there's, there's some indications that one of the first priorities of the, uh, the incoming committee chairs is going to be to end the sequester and, and to basically keep it from happening again. So that certainly um, caused for some optimism in the contractor community. We've seen this uh, with uh, many of the federal centric contractors that we follow. We have uh, one additional question, too. So you guys have got probably 90 seconds at most to answer it. See what you can do. Um, earlier, you discussed growth in non-U.S. markets. Can you cite any specific examples of health IT vendors winning awards in international markets, and which of these vendors in your study do you believe are best positioned for growth outside the U.S.? Just make sure I got the question in the clear, Allison. Um, you, 
you're looking for international uh, vendors who are positioned, best positioned uh, in the international market outside U.S.? Yep. Okay, thanks for the question. Um, so as we mentioned earlier, certain international markets have become an increasing, uh, uh, more, more and more vendors are looking to expand both uh, organically and organically to R&D. Uh, um, so they are uh, certainly, that's a trend that we want to keep an eye on. Uh, we observed over the uh, course of 2014, um, uh, the volume of non-U.S. healthcare IT awards, of course, increasing. Uh, we expect the trend uh, to accelerate uh, in 2015 uh, with vendors such as Deloitte uh, and CGI expanding health IT sales, generated particularly in uh, EMEA, in, uh, uh, other global MNC companies with global scale such as IBM, Accenture, CSC, Dell, and HP are certainly well positioned to capitalize on growth in uh, non-U.S. markets. Just to give you a bit of color, um, in the Middle East, uh, uh, Dell houses over 200 resources, uh, which represents really uh, over $100 million of the annual services business. Um, in, uh, during the point, pre-Q14, we saw several vendors uh, winning uh, uh, new non-US deals, uh, including the CGI deal with the UK-based uh, West uh, Hertfordshire Hospitals, uh, NHS Trust, to modernize IT services, and Cerner won at the Qatar-based primary health care corporation, because I think uh, John mentioned earlier, to provide EHR systems. Uh, in particular, what we believe is that Cerner's uh, recent acquisition of the Siemens uh, Health uh, Services uh, last August positioned the company for accelerating international growth. I think I saw the announcement a couple of days ago that uh, the acquisition closed, and it's uh, the full-on uh, uh, integration process right now. So uh, it will provide Cerner with a new HR, analytics, and consulting solutions. More importantly, uh, with respect to international growth, expanded certain scale through an addition of, I think, with, uh, with 2,800 uh, uh, employees, uh, clients, and global locations. What we expect is that the Siemens uh, Health Services acquisitions will provide Cerner with a, that scale to, to accelerate international market share gains and become a really stronger competitor against uh, some of its uh, U.S. counterparts, such as uh, Epic. Great. Thanks, Bob. Um, sure. We run up against the end of our time, so uh, I think we had a couple more questions that come through, and we will respond to those people offline. Um, so I want to thank everyone for your questions today and thank the analysts for their time. As I mentioned, I'm going to share all the social media links with you, so please do follow the analysts and TV here on the Twitter handle for you here. Uh, and we don't mention it, but I always like to. Uh, I encourage you to, to reach out to the analysts on LinkedIn and connect with them directly as well to see what they're doing um, in terms of their research. They post a lot of their stuff on LinkedIn. It's a great place to, to see what they're doing. On the way out of the webinar, there is a short survey that we always like to give. Um, how valuable was the presentation day? How good were the presenters? And any other open-ended feedback? You do realize that your time is important. We want to make sure that the time you spend with us is well spent. So if there's feedback on what we could do to make this more valuable and effective for you, we do want to hear that so we can incorporate uh, that feedback and improve our process for the quarter. I'm going to leave the chat function open for another couple of minutes in case any last-minute questions uh, or anyone like to set up a conversation directly with the analyst. And if we don't hear from you guys, uh, we look forward to uh, presenting this webinar again to you uh, next quarter. So thanks, everyone, and have a great afternoon.